What is the innovation? There are more technologies coming all the time. Trying to get down to the specifics rather than being a sort of general partnership. Innovation dialogue. It's coming and it's coming quick. Commit more resources and time and energy. The prosthetics field to return people to function. Least meets least in Silicon Valley. Welcome to Innovation Dialogue. I'm Diana Ding, and today we're going to talk about uh, equipping entrepreneurs to raise money, uh, raise money fast. And here with us is Mr. David Musby. I call him Professor. <laughs> professor. Thanks. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thank you, Diana. Yeah, thank you. And David Musby is the CEO of four companies, and he's also author of a book, and he's also the keynote speaker and the pioneers. So tell us something. And you are right now. You are the executive director of. Karatsu Forum Academy, right? Great, thank yeah. you. So, mm -hmm. so the, the story about Karatsu Forum Academy really begins with the vision of the founder of Karatsu Forum, which is the world's largest angel investor network. Mm -hmm. So Randy, Randy Williams, Randy Williams yeah. is the founder and yeah. CEO of Karatsu mm -hmm. Forum. He also has a passion not just for investing, but he recognizes the importance of education mm -hmm. in he's, making he's my mentor, good. So we're showing the picture of him, yes. So that's Go great. Go ahead, yes. Uh, so that's Randy. He's mm -hmm. got more gray hair than I do. Yes. <laughs> so, um, so what he had was an idea mm -hmm. that education could make investors more productive. Mm -hmm. And he said one of the biggest challenges is getting entrepreneurs equipped to tell their story in a way that resonates with investors. Mm -hmm. So that was the real genesis of some experiments that he began about four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. So for any startups, it's very hard to raise money. Uh, why it is so hard? So you're absolutely right. Raising money is probably one the of the hardest most thing. hardest thing you have to do in your whole mm -hmm. life. So um, I've been through that process several times. That's why I not only have gray hair, but much of it is running away. So what we try to do is to address those issues. But the key issue that entrepreneurs run into over and over and over again is speaking a language that investors can understand and relate to. What do you mean by speaking the language? It's not the English language, right? It's not. It's not. What's the what's the language? So the language <laughs> is understanding mm -hmm. the language of investment. Mm -hmm. So return on investment, risk, mm -hmm. uh, focus, uh, diversity. So some of these things f cause entrepreneurs to seriously stumble when they're trying to tell their story to investors, because. The thing that most entrepreneurs are very familiar with is their product and their customers. Mm -hmm. So everything that we learn in business school is really focused on the market and our products and our customers and not so much on investors. I've been to some of the Kratzel Forum's um, events. Like yes. I saw the startup pitching with the VCs. And uh, I, I, you know, I can tell that they really most of them understand their market, but many of them were still not seeing the language for the investors, right? Exactly. What are, what are the mistakes they made? So the kind of mistakes that they're making mm -hmm. is they move into talking about the product rather than their business. Mm -hmm. So there's a key, mm -hmm. key component here, which is that your product or your team or these other things are risk mitigation elements. They're not the driver, but it feels like they are. Mm -hmm. And so I want to tell you about it. So I've got the greatest piece of software for amateur sports that ever existed. Well, that may be true, but unless I can turn that into economic value for investors, they don't hear it. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So that's that's where the biggest breakdown is. 
they're talking about business. They, they're thinking they're, they're talking about their business. So what is the, the right way to talking about the business? So the right way to talk about the business, is that's one of the things that we teach mm -hmm. in the academy, mm -hmm. is to think about their business as a product. Mm -hmm. So when you think about your business as a product. Think about the business as a product. Yes, it is. And how that. So think about that for a minute. Just reflect mm -hmm. back and say, OK. So you mean you can sell your business? Yes. That's, that's, so when you're an investor, mm -hmm. what you really want to hear, mm -hmm. what I want to hear as an exit, investor. How to exit, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's all about how am I going to recognize the mm -hmm. gain mm -hmm. that you're going to deliver to me, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, I ha and you have to be able to reveal what that gain is going to be in the path forward. Mm -hmm. And then you've got to tell enough about all those risk mitigation things I just talked about. Mm -hmm. I have to tell enough that you're going to have confidence that I've thought through all of those risk domains. So the buzzword in the, the community is mm -hmm. due diligence. As a startup myself, I feel, you know, I totally understand why they cannot think their business as a whole product to sell. Because when they started this business, they haven't thought that long. They are focused on so many things happening right now. Yes. And also, some of them really stick on their business. They think it's like their baby. They yes. never think about it, sell them. <laughs> so one of the things about mm -hmm. uh, leading a public company mm -hmm. was that that took me into that space. Mm -hmm. Because I had to think about. How to convince them. Yeah, how to convince investors yeah. that they ought to go to NASDAQ and they ought to buy shares in my stock. Mm -hmm. Well, the only reason they're going to buy shares in my stock is so that they can turn around and sell them at some future date and have a gain that's going to matter to them. Mm -hmm. They care about my product only to the extent that it ensures that there's going to be some kind of a gain. Nobody can ensure that, right? Well, but they try, but we have to try. Mm -hmm. So when, uh, when I come up with a new idea, whether it's, uh, a very special lens cap, or it happens to be a software product. Mm -hmm. I, it's, it's important for me as the entrepreneur to think through the life cycle of that whole business, mm -hmm. not just the product. Yeah, I think it's more about the concept, the way you are thinking, the direction you are thinking. Now, how, how do you train that? So that's what we do in the academy, is mm -hmm. help people adjust their world view. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a, an example of um, a woman that was in a recent cohort who her, her business focus was on uh, how did she equip her clients to be able to raise money. She's well, helping her clients to raise money. Yes, and she hadn't thought through many of these things. If she hadn't thought through, how can she help the others? That's the whole point. And yes. there are thousands uh -huh. of consultants out in the world exactly. today uh -huh. that are saying, OK, here's how you go do it. And there's mm -hmm. a, some approach at a quick fix. Or if you just learn how to speak, you know, you take some speech lessons. Mm -hmm. Or you do these targeted solutions. But if you don't mm -hmm. take a look at your worldview and where you find value mm -hmm. and where you're going to deliver it, mm -hmm then you can't get there from here. Well, this is, uh, you know, the way you're training the startups. But I, you know, for we are doing a show called Battle Silicon. You actually, you are one of the yes. people and judge for the great. show. That was great. And I get to know so many of the entrepreneurs and startups. And I can tell, you know, not everybody is good at talking. Not everybody is good at, you know, giving the presentation. Yes. But they still, you know, people think their idea is great. So how important is the speech uh, skill related to this? So the, the speaking skill is mm -hmm. not so, poor, so important. Mm -hmm. what, but what you have to remember is that in how you tell your story, mm -hmm. when you're speaking to a group of investors, particularly angel investors, mm -hmm. you're dealing with really smart people. That's true. OK? Yeah. And so they're hoping that you're going to be smarter than they are. The, you, how can you be smarter than they are? <laughs> yes, in your space. <laughs> yeah. So that's where issues of competition come up and the like. Mm -hmm. But how you look at the value stream 
and whether or not you look at your business as a product mm -hmm. becomes rapidly visible to you even when you don't think about it. Mm -hmm. When you speak too much about the features and functions and benefits of your product, except to the extent that they will cause accelerated adoption, the accelerated adoption is what causes growth in valuation. Growth in valuation. Hold on, Professor. This is <laughs> sorry, so, so complicated. Can you simplify yeah, this? OK, so, so uh -huh. let's think about it like, um, mm -hmm. uh, can you give us an example? It's a very story? specific example. No, yeah. this is this is uh, mm -hmm. this is fine. So um, let's say I've got I want to raise money because I've got a chicken farm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I raise the world's best chickens, and I'm really proud of my chickens. Okay, so the marketplace values my chickens based upon how many chickens I can sell. Well. I'm so concerned about the quality of my chickens that I'm not really focused on growing the number of chickens I grow. Oh, yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yes. So if the market values my mm -hmm. business mm -hmm. on the number of chickens <laughs> I have to sell, then I'm not paying attention to investor interests. Mm -hmm. Investors get that very fast. Mm -hmm. You can be the most passionate chicken raiser that ever existed mm -hmm. and still fall flat when it comes to speaking to yeah, investors. But how to e expand that, how to grow your business. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what I need to mm -hmm. be able to learn is that to grow the value of mm -hmm. my business, mm -hmm. I need to not just create high quality chickens, mm -hmm. but I have to have a distribution network and I have to have sales mm -hmm. and I have to have a mechanism for getting those to market. Mm -hmm. I think that's equally important, right? Absolutely. Because you have to have the good chicken, then you have to have, think about the market and how to sustainable. So th you can think about that with regard to your mm -hmm. TV stuff. Yes. Okay, so it's great if I've got a great studio and I've got all these really great gizmos and we can produce the best looking videos you ever saw, but if nobody ever sees them, yeah, so it we doesn't have to, hold any charm for exactly, your customers. Exactly. And if it doesn't hold charm for your mm -hmm. customers, mm -hmm. you don't have any way to grow your business. Mm -hmm. And investors look at that and say, this is a very interesting lifestyle business, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have the growth attributes that's going to meet my financial targets. So they targets. don't want to invest on you. Right. Yeah, that's the start. They may like you a whole lot, mm -hmm. but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I will tell that this is also the lesson I learned. You know, when I first started my own company and I put my whole heart, my time and energy on this and treat this as my own baby. Yes. But you know, I didn't really pay enough attention to the sustainability and the whole market. Yes. So after three years and we learned our lesson and we also, you know, it's good for us to get in touch with the, the mentors and the investors and the, they really, they, they taught us. So that's why we need to learn. Everybody need to learn this. Well, you've done a great job because we met a little over a year ago mm -hmm. for the first time. Yes. And so I've been watching what's been going on and what you're doing is building a believable track record of leadership. So... It's great if you've got a good product, but what's more important to investors mm -hmm. is that you have the, later, the leadership wherewithal mm -hmm. to be able to adapt to changes that nobody could foresee. Mm -hmm. So there would be some who would say um, that, that people didn't foresee the economic collapse of 2007, 2008. Yes. Okay? There's other people who would say why well, it was obvious, but the people who have been able to be resilient mm -hmm. and find a path forward, mm -hmm. even in the face of that adversity, mm -hmm. these are the kind of people that, entre that investors are trying to find. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So part of what we do with the academy is help people rediscover their ability to do extraordinary things mm -hmm. that they have come to take for granted. So we're talking about equipping the entrepreneurs to raise money fast. Yes. And uh, you're talking about that we should, you know, ha develop their ability. And what kind of ability are the most important for them? So 
for raising money in particular, mm -hmm. the most important thing to do is to learn what's going to resonate with investors. Mm -hmm. So what kind of behavior, what kind of vocabulary, mm -hmm. um, you have to really understand. What kind of vocabulary? So the vocabulary. What are the vocabularies? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry. OK, I'm going back to school now. Um, so it is. Hmm. Say, say, like, if you put this money on my company, then. So let me, I'll try and give you some structure for this. Yes. So the vocabulary is kind of like the following. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to quickly identify the big idea that is driving, that will drive your business's growth. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. You then need to be clear about, mm -hmm. here's how much money I need for us to be able to deliver on that opportunity. Mm -hmm. One of the things that happens is very early in a presentation or a discussion, entrepreneurs get all caught up in their product. Mm -hmm. If you do that, what you do is close down the listening of investors. Mm -hmm. Really simple. So what's the big idea and a claim that we have developed some capabilities that fix that problem? Then you say, OK, here's how much money I need and the basic terms of, the, of an investment deal. Really simple, very quick. Mm -hmm. Then you say, very clearly and very specifically, here's how much money, I, here's what I'm going to do with the money. Mm -hmm. So if I say I need to have $2 million mm -hmm. to get the best return mm -hmm. on this opportunity for amateur sports, mm -hmm. I then say, OK, I'm going to spend a half a million dollars on engineering. I'm going to spend a million dollars mm -hmm. on sales and marketing. And I'm going to spend $200,000 on um, um, administrative work, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to spend $300,000 mm -hmm. on incentive programs for my distribution channel. Mm -hmm. Okay? So what I've just done is eliminated all the ambiguity for you as a potential investor. Now you may say, I think that's really stupid, but there's going to be somebody else in the group that's going to say that's absolutely terrific. So even though, <laughs> even though they can give you a particular number, and uh, clearly plan on this. Yes. But how do you identify the true value if this is going to happen or not? So that's the next step. Yes. So the next step is, mm -hmm. so here's how much money I need. Mm -hmm. Here's what I'm going to do with it. Here's how you're going to get paid back. Mm -hmm. Now, what I need to be able to do as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. I need to know what the marketplace is for my company, mm -hmm. not for my products although I need to know that too, mm -hmm. but I need to know that this kind of product is going to get bought by CBS. Mm -hmm. And CBS is already buying companies of this sort, and the basis for valuation is mm -hmm. revenue or eyeballs or whatever that mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's essential that you as an entrepreneur... Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sometimes, it's, you know, they are giving the presentation in just two minutes, right? Yes. So it's Two minutes is a very short time. <laughs> <laughs> so I have, so there's a funny story. Mm -hmm. um, so a very dear friend of mine was trying to raise money. He came to the Koretsu Forum Academy, did really well. <clears throat> and um, he went out and he kept trying to raise money. He gets to, you know, like uh, nine months later. Mm -hmm. So I said, tell me what your two minute, give me your two minute pitch. Mm -hmm. And his two minute pitch was just like everybody else's. And I said, wait a minute, you have to stop doing that. Mm -hmm. You have to hit these four or five topics mm -hmm. and you've only got two minutes. So you have to arrange them this way or an investor won't hear it. Yes. So he said, I can't tell my story in two minutes. I Every, said, Michael. You know, many people said so. Say, oh, time is so too short for me to tell my story. But that's is that true? It is, it is too short to tell the story they want to tell. Mm -hmm. It's not too short to tell the story investors, investors can want hear. to hear. Yes. yes, that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just got it just perfectly. So I spent a little bit of time working with Michael because he was a very good friend. Mm -hmm. He's my co author in, in our book. So. After about uh, three weeks of, you know, hour here, hour there, he finally said, he called me up and he says, I did it. I've got my story down into two minutes. 
So we went to a pitch, pitch event that night in San Francisco, and he was just going there not to pitch, but to listen. Mm -hmm. So he runs into an investor, an angel investor that I know really well, uh, in the hallway. And uh, so the investor says, well, what are you doing here? And Michael says, well, in his head, he goes, well, here's an opportunity to tell my story. Yes. So I'll test it. He told the story. <laughs> so, it may be less than two minutes, right? So, so okay. he's in the hallway, and he gives his two-minute pitch. Mm -hmm. And the investor, who is a member of Kretsu Forum, mm -hmm. the investor says, I want to meet with you in my office on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. On Monday, the day before he was supposed to meet with the investor, he went, Michael went back to Boston and raised a million and a half wow. using that two-minute talk that he said he couldn't ever do in the first place. Wow. That works. It works. Yeah. And so... You know, this, this is one of the things. So the, the people who are going through this Capital Access Series program, every month for the, since September of last year, there's been at least one person who has presented at a Koretsu Forum mm -hmm. meeting. Mm -hmm. Anybody who has presented has gone on to due diligence. Mm -hmm. And of the 10 or 11 people, only one of them has not been funded. Mm -hmm. You know, when I, you know, we're doing the, the show Battle Silicon, when I see many of the startups, I think they are, they are, they have the good plan and they have the good business model and they have, but the thing is they are not good at doing the presentation or they didn't talk in the, the language that investors want to hear. If some team like this come to you, uh, what would you do to change them in the short term? So what I do is work with them through something that we call perfect pitch. Mm -hmm. And that's the structure. What's the perfect pitch? The, the perfect pitch mm -hmm. is a, an approach to packaging your information, mm -hmm. your story, mm -hmm. in a way that uh, is almost guaranteed to resonate with investors. Guaranteed? Yes. Oh. So what, what happens when people use this model is that investors will hear it in a way they've never heard before, mm -hmm. and they will very quickly say, I'm really interested mm -hmm. or I'm not. Mm -hmm. Now, on the surface, you say, I don't want to have anybody say no. Well, that, that's a mistake. Because what happens is if you try to, try to keep everybody in the same, you end up with a bunch of people in the middle space entrepreneurs and investors don't have time to be in that middle space. Mm -hmm. So it is to your advantage to polarize your audience. Mm -hmm. The people who are convicted will be really convicted and they will, when you have a due diligence meeting with them, the likelihood that something good happens is going to come out, mm -hmm. okay? So it's really about, uh, so Jeffrey Moore wrote a book uh, or an article for Harvard Business Review about mm -hmm. a year ago called Provocation-Based Selling. Now, Jeffrey is a, he's an icon in the marketing community. And this article was part of the basis for some of the work that I've done with this perfect pitch. Mm. Today we have uh, Mr. David Mosby, and we're talking about equipping entrepreneurs to raise money fast. Actually, I, you know, after we talked well, I, I got a sense that, you know, it's all about communication. It's all about you master the skill and the, you have the real mindset and think the way that investors think yes. and have the bigger picture. And uh, like what you said, thinking your company as a product instead of focusing on your small product. Yes. yes. So that's, that's a great way to capture <laughs> the idea. Mm -hmm. um, just to kind so of... So what's the last suggestion you give to our entrepreneurs and startups before we finish the show. Okay, so the thing that you really want to think about is what's the market value, understand the market value of your business mm -hmm. and make sure that the market value of your business meets your investment objectives. Mm -hmm. The thing that many entrepreneurs forget is that they're the first investors. And if you don't have some target outcomes, for doing what you're doing, then you have no way to gauge your progress toward that outcome. So you just, the, the, the approach that I've always taken that has been helpful to me in raising money mm -hmm. is to say, here's what my target outcome is economically, mm -hmm. and say, what do I need to do to enable that reality to happen? 
And then you begin building your plans around achieve, achieving that target mm -hmm. rather than something that's product feature focused, mm -hmm. which is what most, most entrepreneurs do. And I have to admit, I've been sucked into that over and over and over again. But I have, I've had enough experience to be able to say, oh, time out. I've lost sight of the real goal. So that's my recommendation. <laughs> Thank you so much, and our show is time up right now. And thank you so much for being with us. And uh, if the, our friends, and if you have, you have fresh questions that want to connect with Mr. David Mosby, you can contact us or see the phone number on screen and contact him directly. Thank you so much. I look much forward for to it. Thank you very thank much, you. Diana. Thank you. As a startup in Silicon Valley, innovation is our DNA. It's inside our blood. What is innovation? Very confident. It's a way of thinking. It's a philosophy. It's a mindset. Uh, it's very closely related to leadership. For me, it's really about finding the right, the right fit between the product and the market. Have a strong technology position, a, a strong market impact. Innovation can be an idea can be a product, can be a service, or can be a thinking. It can be everything out of box thinking, not limited to your background, to the past. Welcome to Innovation Dialogue. I'm Diana Ding, and today we are going to talk about Cloud Festival. Today we have Carrie Davis, and she's here to share her story, which is so inspiring. What we are doing here is to summarize, bring out the point, and give a good presentation. Help people to bring out their idea to the whole world. It's very important to be able to spot uh, human talent and to be a good leader. More importantly, it's how our corporate and, and partners perceive the value that's come out of the event. Mm -hmm. It was all about uh, seizing the opportunity rather than looking at the world as a set of problems. I want to change the paradigm of angel investing being local. I want all of us to think global and to look at great opportunities in Asia or Europe, wherever it is in the world. Come, come to Ding Ding TV. Let us work together to bring out your idea to share with the whole world.